Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta. And today we will understand how to calculate minimum sample size for PLS models. In partial least square structural equation modeling, the calculation of the minimum sample size required depends on the several factors, including the complexity of the model, the desired statistical power, the level of significance and the number of latent variables and indicators in the model. There is no one-size-fits-all formula for determining the minimum sample size in PLSM, as it depends on various statistical considerations and the research context. However, researchers often use rules of thumbs and guidelines to estimate an appropriate sample size. There are various methods to calculate the sample size. We will see all of them one by one. First method. 10 times the largest number of formative indicators used to measure a single construct or 10 times the largest number of structural paths directed at a particular construct in the structural model. So, we will go in Smart PLS. In your model, you will have to identify where the formative constructs are there. How we will identify? See, in this case, the arrows are moving out of the construct and therefore it is a reflective construct. In this case, the arrows are moving out and therefore it is a reflective construct. In this case, the arrows are moving out and therefore it is a reflective construct. In this case, the arrows are moving out and therefore it is a reflective construct. Now let's say that I invert this model. Here, the arrows are moving inside and therefore this is your formative construct. So identify the formative construct and now count the number of arrows. One, the number of arrows moving inside. One, two, three. 3, 4, 5. So 5 into 10, 50. The minimum sample size is 50. In case there are two uh, formative constructs, then you will consider the construct on which the maximum arrows are, are, the, are loaded. So here 5 are there and here 4 is there. So I will consider this one. So 5 into 10, that is 50. Now the second condition that there are no formative constructs, only reflective are that you can see here. So organizational commitment affecting the staying intention, environmental perception affecting the staying intention, behavior of the co-workers affecting the staying intention, job satisfaction affects, affecting the staying intention. In this case, find out the endogenous construct. It means that you will have to identify where all the arrows are moving inside a particular construct. So, then you will have to count 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 4 into 10, 40. The minimum sample size is 40. So, this is a second case. 10 times the largest number of structural paths directed at a particular construct in the structural model. Now, in case, suppose you are having two endogenous construct. 1 and 2. So, you will consider the maximum. Here only two arrows are moving inside and here four are moving inside and therefore four into ten. So, our example is given. If you have a latent variable with five indicators, you would need a minimum sample size of at least 10 into 5, which is 50. Another guideline says having a minimum sample size of 200 regardless of the model complexity. This rule is more conservative and provides a buffer for potential model estimation issues. As PLSM is non-parametric technique, some researchers argue that it is more robust to smaller sample size compared to other SAM techniques. Still, having a sufficient sample size is crucial for achieving reliable and the meaningful results. The second method, inverse square root method. It considers the probability that the ratio of path coefficient and its standard error will be greater than the critical ratio, critical value for the test statistic for a specific significant level. The minimum sample size and minimum should be greater than 3.168 divided by P minimum. This is your path coefficient uh, to, the powers, uh, to the power 2 at 10% level of significance and minimum should be greater than 2.486 p minimum its absolute value the whole bracket the power 2 at 5 percent level of significance n minimum should be greater than 2.123 divided by p minimum absolute value and its power to 2 at 1 percent level of significance let's assume that we are working on 5 percent level of significance therefore i'll be using this formula 
and a minimum path coefficient. The minimum path coefficient is 0.3. So the minimum sample size required is n minimum should be greater than 2.486 divided by 0.3. We are taking the absolute value even if it is a negative. If your even if your beta is negative, you will take the absolute value. So 2.486 divided by 0.3 and it's square. So 68.60. It means that uh, you will have, you will require a sample size of 69 or 70. This is second method. Third method. Maximum number of arrows pointing at a construct. So again, we'll go back in the model. Maximum number of arrows pointing at a construct. Four arrows are there. So four arrows, uh, our target, that is uh, minimum R square required, do we require 0 0.50, 0 0.70, how much do we require? So let's say in social science, we require 0 0.50 and we want to work on 5% level of significance here and 0 0.50, four are there. So the minimum sample size is 42. So this is the third method. Now the fourth method, that is using the calculator which is given by Daniel Sopper. So we'll go on the website and we'll write out here Daniel Sopper sample size calculator. Activate it. Anticipated effect size. So here we have to specify how much effect size I want to consider. By convention, values of 0 0.1, 0 0.3 and 0 0.5 are considered small, medium and large respectively. So we will have to specify that how much effect size do I want. Let's see, I will keep this as 0 0.1 only. Second is desired statistical power. Uh, normally it should be more than 0.8 number of latent variables uh, in your model so let's uh, go back in smart pls and we will uh, this time we will take another model so this is a corporate reputation model which is given in smart pls we'll count how many latent uh, constructs are there one two three four five six seven and eight so let's insert this number. Number of latent variables is 8. Number of observed variables. Observed means the measured variable. We'll have to count all the yellow ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and 31. Let's enter 31 here. Keep the probability level as 0 0.05 only. Calculate. So the minimum sample size uh, to detect the effect is 1889. Now what this calculator is? This calculator will compute the sample size required for the study that uses a structural equation model given the number of observed variables and the latent variables in the model. The anticipated uh, effect size and the desired probability and statistical power levels we will have to specify. The calculator will return both minimum sample size required to detect the specified effect and the minimum sample size required uh, for the structural complexity of the model. So here you can see the minimum sample size for the model structure is 108 and to detect the effect is 1889. So this is the fourth method. The fifth method is using G power. The G power is a free to use software used to calculate the statistical power. This program offers the ability to calculate the power for a wide variety of statistical tests, including the t-test, f-test, chi-square test, among others. In order to calculate power, the user must know four of five variables, either the number of groups, number of observations, effect size, significance level, or the power 1 minus beta. So let's see how we can calculate the sample size using g-power. 
So for this, we will go in Google and we will write down G Power. From here, you can download this G Power. It is a completely free software. Now, activate it. Now, in this case, what you will have to do is you will activate F test. Then you will go here and linear multiple regressions, fixed model, R square deviation from zero is to be activated. Now we'll specify the effect size. So you can see here how much effect size do we want? Do we want do we require a large effect size? The medium or the small one? Alpha is a significance level or rather uh, the p-value how much we keep it so normally we keep it as 0 0.05 number of predictors so let's again go back in the model number of predictors means the independent variables one two three four i will not count this because this is a dependent variable in case if you are having a moderator variable moderator uh, variable here you will not calculate it you will only calculate the mod the predictors one two three and four so let's insert four here and we will press calculate so i got the sample size 129 you can see here 129 so this is a minimum sample size required uh, recommended by the software but as per the suggestions of her et al and cohen et al Sample size should be at least two times or three times of what you get in G-Power software. So these were the different methods of calculating the sample size for PLS model. For more videos on smart, smart PLS, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Please refer my playlist in which I have already uploaded many videos on smart PLS. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the like button.